Welcome to the second part of this technical video on Custom Compiler's User Defined Device, UDD. In the first part, Shabir did an introduction to the basics of UDD and demonstrated how layout designers can easily create simple custom layout structures and use them as P cells without any programming. In this session, Shabir will show how you can use this feature for advanced applications and create more complex layout structures. Please go ahead, Shabir. Let's now look at a slightly more complex UDD PCL example. Here, we want a PCL wherein there is a MOS device in the center whose width, length, and number of fingers can be controlled. And once you change width, length, and number of finger, the size, the B-box of that MOS device will change. What we want is to have a guard ring around that B-box we want all the source and gate terminals of the MOS device to be shorted together and connected to this guard ring. We want to short all the drains together and we want to provide a landing pad for source and drain. Let's see how it works. We first instantiate the NMOS device from the PDK library. We define parameters for width, length and finger on the UDD PCL and connect it to that device. We create polysilicon lines to connect the gate fingers. We create four representative rectangles with which we'll create a guard ring. We create uh, metal one and metal two lines to short source and drain, and we create these two landing pads. Once we have created these basic structures, we kind of use align operations to get them into right shape and form. So these four rectangles are the basis of our guard ring. We create align operation first for the polyline, which will short everything together. Then these representative guard ring shapes to be certain spacing away from the B box for the device, which was shown in green. Then we fill this with the contact shapes of certain size. This guard ring needs an active layer as well. So we replicate the these four rectangles uh, with the active shape underneath it. We also create a metal one shape uh, with a little bit of shrink applied to that that with a contact. Likewise, we do a bunch of other operations. Once we have done, we hit compile and it ends up creating a P cell for that. Now let's use that. We instantiate the P cell right here and that's how it looks. We can change the width parameter and the length parameter for this UDD P cell and also the number of fingers and you can see the MOS device in the center changed as per the PDK device and the guard ring changed itself as per the B box of the MOS device. Let's look at one last example for inverter as a P cell. Here we instantiate an NMOS and PMOS device from regular PDK library and this is a layout for a single finger inverter. We have a NMOS and PMOS device. We define on our UDD P cell parameters to control the width of NMOS device and PMOS device individually. Length of these two devices with a common parameter, the spacing between the N and P device, the number of fingers, and so on. Once we have defined these parameters, uh, we first connect these to the P cell for NMOS device and PMOS device. Then we create a poly rectangle to short the poly lines of NMOS and PMOS device, a metal one terminal for the output pin. We also create poly rectangles at top, middle, and bottom. Then we use copy operation onto the poly rectangle for the gate to replicate it if user were to change the number of fingers. Likewise, a copy operation for metal one line and the metal one lines to connect to VDD and VSS. Then we create some remove operations. We have created three 
poly rectangles in blue at top, middle and bottom and only one of them would be active and user would have option to keep which one they want to be having active. Then we position these things with respect to the VBOX of the device or the top and bottom uh, VDD and VSS rectangles. We tie things together with a bunch of align operations. We compile the P cell and here is an instance of it. We change width, length, spacing, number of fingers and the inverter P cell reevaluates in a nicely routed form. Using a stretch handle, we can also have the output terminal taken out on metal one. So this is how an inverter got parameterized wherein you can feed in the drive strength by changing the width and number of fingers. So we saw three examples, simple to complex, wherein we could create P cell using UDD. We never had to write any Python code. We started with a layout, define parameter, use those parameters into the object attributes, created operations on these objects, compiled, and the UDD created P cell was no different than the P cell available in the PDK library as far as the usage is concerned. So the layout engineers using this technology can create DRC clean, nice structures, which will optimize their area and power, reduce their layout creation turnaround time. What we've also seen is this technology is very useful in design technology co-optimization, where since technology is not yet finalized, DRC rules are not finalized and PDK library is not available. So if you want to do a design and optimize it, UDD lets you create those devices whose geometry keep changing when the technology parameters change. So really speaking, what you can create with it is up to you as layout engineers. What you want, as long as you can think of a structure for layout, some parameters and how you would control the layout using objects, attributes and operations, you can create pretty much anything that you want. With that, I'll hand it back to Sony for his concluding comments. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shabir. That was a really insightful session on UDD. So now you have some good idea on how custom compilers visually assisted automation technology is helping the layout designers finish their custom layout faster with improved quality. I hope you liked all the information we shared here. Please check out our website to learn more and to hear from our customers who are adopting our solution to design the next generation of products. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.